Hello, this is uh, Professor Joseph Holbrook, and I'm going to start a new series today on the Caribbean, an introduction to the Caribbean, uh, interdisciplinary and somewhat historical. So uh, let's get started. I'm drawing some of the material from today from Owen Blewett's interdisciplinary book called The Caribbean. Uh, the Caribbean region is also called the Antilles or the West Indies. Caribbean comes from the indigenous group called the Caribs, who were a fierce warlike group in the southern part of the uh, Lesser Antilles. And that's they gave their name to the Caribbean. But it's also called the Antilles, which was named after a mythical island, uh, supposedly in the Atlantic or the West Indies, which reflects uh, the error that Christopher Columbus made when he arrived in the Bahamas thinking that it was India. And he called the inhabitants Indians. So uh, among the British or the Anglo-Caribbean, they often use the term West Indies uh, or the Antilles or Caribbean. So there's several different uh, ways you can refer to this particular island chain south of us here in Miami. West Indies, Antilles, or Caribbean. Sometimes we also can refer to the French West Indies, the Dutch West Indies, the British West Indies, the French Antilles, to specify which language group. So here's a picture of the, uh, uh, the Caribbean. And, uh, of course, the Caribbean proper are, is this island chain uh, beginning up around Cuba and the Bahamas and going down all the way down to the coast of Venezuela. Um, this upper part is called the, uh, hold on one second, let me find my notes. Um, it's called the, the Greater Antilles. Um, that is Cuba, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, and Haiti. Uh, actually, not Haiti, but Hispaniola. The island of Hispaniola is divided between uh, French-speaking, uh, Creole-speaking, and Spanish-speaking, Haiti and the Dominican Republic, but it's one island. Uh, that's the Greater Antilles. This part right here, the Bahamas, of course, are up here. And stretching down through here is the Lesser Antilles. These are smaller islands. Uh, which are sometimes divided into, uh, further divided into uh, the Windward and Leeward Islands. And I'm not going to try to explain those. I tried to sort it out, but it's a little too confusing. It has to do with the uh, sailing ships as they came from Europe. They tended to come right through here between Dominica and Martinique and Guadeloupe. And uh, they named uh, this upper side the uh, Leeward and the lower side, the westward, but the reasons for me are confusing, and I'm not going to go into it, depending on which way the wind was blowing. Usually the wind blowed this way, from the northeast. So, let's continue. The islands are the heart of the Caribbean, but the surrounding areas share Caribbean coasts and similar historical and cultural characteristics. Recently, there's been a tendency to expand the definition of the Caribbean. Core, fringe, and coastal areas. The core area of the Caribbean is the Greater and Lesser Antilles, which I just showed you. Uh, that's the island chain, the backbone of the Caribbean. The fringe zone includes the Bahamas, Belize, and the Guyanas. And then the, the uh, periphery are the coastal areas of Colombia, Venezuela, Central America, and Mexico. And uh, so you see the Bahamas are up here. They sometimes are included, sometimes excluded. But you, you could call them, uh, uh, what do we call it? The fringe zone is right up here. Also, the fringe would include Belize, which is on the coast. It doesn't show it here properly, but it's, it's on the coast of Guatemala. And the Guianas are down here. Even though they're, they're somewhat outside the Caribbean, uh, but they uh, share similar characteristics to the Caribbean. Then the coastal areas would be along the coast of Venezuela, Colombia, 
Panama, and up through Central America, including the Yucatan Peninsula and Mexico. And here, of course, is the Gulf of Mexico. Some commentators include South Florida with Miami as a type of regional capital for the Caribbean. The Miami Herald, our newspaper, acts as a regional newspaper. The densely populated islands have a history uh, have a history of uh, sugar plantation agriculture based on enslaved African labor. This is probably the most distinct uh, characteristic of the Caribbean was uh, as soon as Christopher Columbus, Columbus arrived on Hispaniola, very quickly in about 50 years, the indigenous Taino uh, culture was destroyed and completely disappeared. Uh, and so the Spanish began to incorporate or to import African labor to replace the disappearing indigenous labor who died from overwork and maltreatment. Indentured workers also came from Asia in the 19th century, adding to the ethnic and cultural and religious diversity. Um, in the Caribbean is an amazing hodgepodge of different languages, cultures, and ethnicities that coexist. Uh, initially, you had the uh, Europeans with the indigenous peoples and with the African uh, slave labor that was imported uh, but in addition to that, you had a, a kind of a race for empire between the Spanish and then later the Dutch, the French, and the British. And so you have islands that are English-speaking, French-speaking, Dutch-speaking, as well as Spanish-speaking. In addition to Creole and other indigenous languages. The Caribbean stretches from 2,000 miles from the Bahamas in the north to Trinidad in the south. The Caribbean islands are usually divided into four geographical groups, which I've already mentioned, the Greater Antilles, which includes Cuba, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, and the island of Hispaniola. The Lesser Antilles, stretching from the uh, British Virgin Islands down to, uh, to uh, Barbados and Grenada. And then you have Trinidad, Tobago, and the ABC Islands. The ABC Islands are Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao off the coast of uh, Venezuela and the Bahamas, those four different groups. The contemporary Caribbean has a significant Afro-Caribbean population and shares elements of culture and creativity. Speaking of the Spanish Greater Antilles, that would include the Cuba, the DR, and Puerto Rico. We're going to exclude Jamaica and Haiti for a moment because we're we're talking about the Spanish-speaking Greater Antilles. Cuba is the largest Caribbean country, which includes numerous small islands, and is under the control of Fidel Castro's uh, communist dream. Of course, Fidel has passed away, and so has Raul has retired, and there's some upheaval going on right now. Uh, but Cuba is still under a socialist control and is still at odds with the United States. Puerto Rico has Commonwealth status with the United States and is the largest remaining colony in the Caribbean. Obviously, it's a colony of the United States, and Puerto Ricans have been granted citizenship rights within the United States. The Dominican Republic, which is on the uh, eastern half of the island of Hispaniola, is trying to make democracy work but has a political history of dictatorship and corruption. In the British Islands, the former British zone includes islands ranging from Jamaica, with a population of about 3 million, to Anguilla, with the uh, several thousand inhabitants. The uh, England began acquiring Caribbean colonies in the 1620s, uh, with the first colonies being St. Kitts and Barbados. During the course of colonial warfare, the British took several islands from the European powers, including Jamaica, Trinidad from Spain, and St. Lucia and Grenada from France. Uh, Jamaica was taken by the British under Oliver Cromwell in about 1655, and Trinidad was taken much later, 1797. It had been under Spanish control for a couple centuries, and then French control, and then it passed over to the British in 1797. So you have a real hodgepodge in Trinidad, both ethnically as well as religiously. 
Um, beginning in about 16, the 1960s, many of the former British islands began to choose national independence instead of continue, continuing their affiliation with Great Britain. Only a few small islands, including Montserrat, Anguilla, and the British Virgin Islands, the Caymans, and the Turks, and Caicos have remained British overseas territories with citizenship rights. The French colonial area includes Martinique, Guad Guadeloupe, and the northern part of St. Martin. Um, there's a uh, great book about that deals with uh, the French Revolution and Guadeloupe Island under Victor Hughes by uh, Alejo Carpentier, the Siglo de las Luces, or the Explosion in a Cathedral. I just finished reading it. Haiti, was, which was controlled by France until the slave revolution and the independence in 1804, is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere and struggles to develop political and economic stability. Uh, most Haitians are very poor and they speak a Creole language. It's a mixture of uh, African languages and French. Uh, speaking of, uh, while we're on this point, uh, the entire island of Hispaniola was controlled by the Spanish but the western half was very uh very very unpopulated and wild and uh, a number of uh, french pirates or french buccaneers began uh began the habit of living on tortuga which is right off the coast and haiti uh, not haiti but the western half of, of of the dominican the western half of hispaniola which they took to call in san domingue uh, they began living there. They would hunt wild boars and they would hunt cattle and cook the flesh, the meat on uh, something called bucons in French, which are like grills. They would basically grill the meat and dry it out, salt it, and sell it as, uh, uh, as, a, uh, as food. And they became known as the buccaneers from their bucon that they used to do the grilling on. And that was the beginning of the buccaneer culture in uh, in the western half of Hispaniola and Tortuga. And eventually, because there were so many of uh, French uh, Frenchmen living in the western half, France was able to uh, get control of the western half of the Hispaniola, which became Saint-Domingue and eventually became a very prosperous uh, sugar producer and a very uh, strong slave society. And we'll learn more about Haiti later in this course, which was the Haiti was the country that emerged after a successful slave rebellion against France after the uh, French Revolution. There's also the Dutch islands, which we must keep in mind. Six territories are connected to the Netherlands, uh, the Netherlands Antilles, or what the Nether, uh, the Dutch West Indies is, includes Saint. Eustatius, Saba, Bonaire, and Curaçao. Aruba and the southern part of St. Martin are autonomous parts of the Kingdom of Netherlands, and they all have status with the European Union. And then the United States. We have to include the United States as a uh, colonial power in the Caribbean because of Puerto Rico. Although exerting influence in the entire contemporary Caribbean, uh, the United States has formal control only in Puerto Rico, acquired from Spain in the Spanish-American War of 1898, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, which includes St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John, which were purchased from Denmark during World War I. People born in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands are citizens of the United States. The Caribbean has a history of conquest and colonialism. Of course, slave, the, the slave uh, production of sugar also characterizes the entire Caribbean. Native American peoples and cultures did not survive the U European conquest. That would include Arawaks, Tainos, and Car Caribs. Uh, there was also a, a, a more primitive uh, group living on the western end of Cuba, this, whose name does not appear here, and I can't, Guanajuabe, Guanajuato, I can't pronounce it right now. Uh, but they were very, a very small group on the western end of Cuba, living in caves. Uh, the enslaved Africans were shipped across the Atlantic in the infamous slave trade, which increased once sugar developed as the major cash crop 
in the 17th century. For most islands, sugar, slavery, and plantation agriculture are part of the historical backdrop to the contemporary demographic and economic scene. Uh, this also led to overpopulation and environmental degradation. Resistance is another, another theme that runs through the entire history of the Caribbean. Resistance to slavery, resistance to exploitation, colonialism, dependency, and marginality. And we're going to talk more in the coming weeks about the uh, emergence of slave societies, two kinds of slave societies, the settler society, I'm sorry, two kinds of Caribbean societies, a settler society and the slave exploitation society, as studied by Franklin Knight in his uh, amazing book. And the end of the slideshow. So you see here is the Caribbean area contextualized within the Americas, or what we might know as Latin America. Okay, thank you very much. That's it for today. Shall I turn the sound back up on our temp? Our uh, steel drum music. Uh, so to be continued next week with the uh, some history of the development of slave and Caribbean societies, uh, drawing from Franklin Knight. Thank you very much.